Hi everyone, my name's Miss Alyssa and I'm here at the Azusa City Library where we're going to be making a DIY super soaker. So if you guys don't know, the super soaker was actually invented by Dr. Lonnie Johnson. Now, interesting person right there. He is a NASA scientist. He worked at JPL, the Jet, Propor Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, he has over a hundred different patents and is the author of several publications on spacecraft power systems. Very interesting guy to create such a fantastic toy as the Super Soaker. <laughs> uh, here is an early prototype of his Super Soaker design uh, that he was making around the 19, late 1980s, early 1990s. And the interesting thing about inventing something is that you generally have a lot of different prototypes. You're going through a lot of different, you're trying out different variables, you know, maybe you tried a different uh, tube system or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind when you're trying to create something new is you might have some trial and error. Now currently, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Johnson is working on something called the Johnson Thermal Electric Energy Converter. I had to write that down. But basically, it converts solar energy into electricity. And it supposedly tries to do so in a more efficient way than current methods, and which would be really great to have renewable solar energy. So that is what he currently work on. It's called the JTEC. And uh, let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about how his actual super soaker works. So. Uh, basically there's a reservoir tank here filled with water and there's a little handle right here that will pump back and forth along the nozzle and what this pump does is it will pump air up into the tank and if you ever used a bike pump before to pump your tires it's kind of similar where the the water will be pumped into the tank. And instead of inflating the tank, the tank is solid, so it can't inflate. Basically what that does is it compresses the air inside the tank, which will also compress the water or water pressure or, or pressurize the water so that it's uh, ready to go, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of pressure in this tank. The water is being pushed by the air that's being pumped inside. And basically this little trigger right here, when you push the trigger, it releases the pressure and the water shoots out the nozzle. So that's basically his early design, one of his first designs that he did for the super soaker. And today we're gonna to be doing something not quite what he did. We're gonna be making something a little bit more like this. <laughs> this is maybe our prototype, right? Um, and it's a little bit different because we're not using air pressure. We're just using a basic cylindrical uh, plunger or a little, um, what do you call this, a syringe. And basically, when we pull back on the syringe, it sucks water from our reservoir tank, which is our water bottle here. And we have this little one-way valve here. So the water can only go out of the bottle, basically out of the bottle and it's going to be pulled into the syringe here and we push down on the plunger since the one-way valve is here it's blocking any water from going back into the bottle it's going to be pushed out through the front nozzle so here's another one-way valve and this is going to be pushed out and up until it shoots out of the top so that's what we're aiming to do today is making this little design here. I think it's called a, a pump action uh, like squirt gun type. It's a very common squirt gun design where you have the plunger and you have the two one-way valves. So I think that's enough a little background for today. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? So what you're gonna need today is uh, you're gonna need a little water bottle. I'm using a little 10 ounce one and you, I went ahead and emptied that water into a cup. So I have my empty water bottle and I'm gonna go ahead and set my water cup aside for now. Also, in on the top of your uh, empty water bottle, 
you're gonna need to put a little hole on the top. If you got one of our kits, the hole's already there. You don't have to worry about making a hole. And then you're also gonna need a syringe. So this syringe here also has a pre-made hole if you uh, got one of our kits. So we, I went ahead and I just put in a little hole right there. And that's so that we can connect our tube to our tank later on. And then you're also going to need two one-way valves. These are ones that you might use in an aquarium. Um, basically, water will only go through the valve one way. And you can always test which way that is by if you just blow in it. And you can hear the, the air come out versus if you blow through the other side and you're not able to blow through. That's how you know that the side you're blowing through is the way the water enters and then exits. So you're also going to need some tubes. I have about a six inch, I, I, or I think this is a 10 inch tube. I have about a two and a half inch long tube and then I have like a little one inch tube. So these are going to, I already pre-cut those so you don't have to do any measuring and you just have to assemble. You're also going to need some tape. I gave you guys if in your kit some washi tape but if you want to use some duct tape instead, then feel free to use duct tape. Um, I wouldn't recommend scotch tape, although I did manage to make my first prototype. This, oops, is this guy going to show? That guy. So I did use some scotch tape with this guy, but just keep in mind scotch tape is not very water resistant. And this is a water squirt gun, so you might want to use a tape that's a little more water resistant. You're also going to need some straws. I have here one bendy straw, so you're going to need that. That's going to help us pull the water from our our tank here, and you're going to need some scissors. Okay, so let me pull up the instructions. So the first thing that we got to do is attach our one-way valve to the nozzle of the syringe. Okay, so I have my little syringe here. Let me just push everything so I can work. And we gotta attach one of these one-way valves to the syringe. Now, the way, if you remember the diagram or what I did before is when the water enters in and we want it to shoot out, we want the water, oops, sorry, to go out this way. So keep in mind that when you're attaching your one-way valve, that I want the water to be able to go this way out through the valve. So I'm going to use my one-way valve and then my little one-inch tube to attach to my syringe. So I'm basically just going to try to shove this in as much as I can. It doesn't have to go all the way in, just enough. You can see that's like that. And then I'm going to do the same to my other end here. I'm just gonna do my best to shove it in and you can kind of, this has a little bit of like a, a screw top so you can try twisting too to get that nice and tight inside okay and it doesn't have to be super perfect but once you're happy with how tight it is you can go ahead and add a little bit of tape I'm just gonna add a little bit of washi tape around both the end with the syringe and then the end with the one-way valve okay like that nice and tight and I'm gonna do it again on this side okay. and again you can use whatever tape you prefer if your washi tape isn't sticking like mine is then maybe maybe you cover it up with some duct tape I'm just going to take a small section here. Use my scissors to cut. Let's try that. So it's really important that we try to keep everything as airtight as possible. So there you go. And basically, if you pull back on your plunger and then block the hole that's on top, you should hear the air come out the end with a little squeak like that. 
If you don't cover the hole, basically the air is just going to be pushed out the hole. So you want to make sure you cover the hole. And if you can hear that sound, then you know you put the valve on right. If you are unable to push the plunger down easily after holding the hole, that tells me you didn't put the, the one-way valve on the correct way. You'll have to flip it around. Okay, so if you can hear that little sound, then you know you've attached it correctly. So our next step now is to attach the other one-way valve. So we have a second one. We want to attach it to the water bottle lid and the bendy straw to the top of the syringe. So I'm going to start with our two and a half inch tube. And I'm going to do my best to shove it into the hole. There's no nice way to, easy way to do it. You're just going to have to try to squeeze and twist. And I did, no, a, a, a trick I found is that if you cut the tube at sort of like a little bit of an angle to get like a point. So let's see if you can see, I kind of cut a little bit of an angle. So you get that point. It's a little bit easier to shove it in and you kind of need to shove and twist, shove and twist until you can get it all the way through. I wouldn't recommend trying to make the hole any bigger than this because we want it nice and tight so that no water comes out. And I almost got it in. Maybe I need to just cut off a little bit more on the bottom edge of my, so I just cut off a little bit more just to kind of squeeze it through. Okay, and I managed to get it in. So let's see if you can kind of, sorry, there's a bit of a shine, but now I have my tube inside through the hole. It's nice and tight. At this point, you could try to put some tape or if you have maybe some hot glue or even regular glue if, you just, if you're patient and let it dry. Um, but as of, I've tested it like this and with it's pretty tight. So you might be okay without putting any tape there. And I'm gonna try it without tape. And if we find out later that we need to add tape, then we'll add tape, okay? So again, now, same thing. If I pull back on my plunger and then I cover the top, I should still hear that, that squeaky noise. All right, so now I'm gonna thread on my bottle top, my uh, water bottle lid. And the reason why is because the one-way valve needs to be inside of the bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread that on through my hole. See if I can get it through. There we go. So you can see I have it so that if I were to put my bottle on, I can still screw my bottle on, okay? Just like that. And I think I'm gonna, the way uh, you can design your bottle, your gun is, you can either have it like this, or you can have it like this. It's kind of up to you how you want to position it. I'm gonna do it so that it's, uh, the reservoir tank is more so over the plunger, like that. And so you can kind of slide the the bottle top so that it has like a, a nice curve like that. All right. So I'm going to remove my lid now. And so n now we want to put uh, the one-way valve on connecting to the tube. I might actually trim it a little bit. I might trim off about half an inch like that. And I'm going to try my best to shove this into here. But so if we think about this way, we want the water to be able to travel from our water tank through the one way valve this way and into our tube. So we got to make sure that our one way valve is facing with the output end into the connected to the tube. Okay, and again, you can know the output by if you blow and the air comes out that end, it's the output, okay? So I'm gonna do my best to kind of jam that into our tube now. So I managed to just shove it in. It's nice and tight, but here again, you can add some tape. Just gonna add a little a sliver of tape at the end here 
and secure it. Okay. And so now when our one-way valve is in our bottle, maybe I'll take off the label so you can kind of see inside the bottle a little bit better. So when our one-way valve is in the bottle, it has to be able to draw from the water inside the tank. But as you can kind of see, it's sort of, it's not, water is going to be affected by gravity, right? So the water will be hanging out on the bottom of the tank. So we got to be able to get it to suck from the bottom. That's where our bendy straw comes in. So I'm going to take my bendy straw. I'm going to cut off maybe about the, the last end there. And I want to attach this end to our valve right like that. So that now when I add my, my bottle, you can see it's sucking from the bottom. But maybe I made it a little too long, so I'm gonna trim off another little bit. Ooh, that went flying. And okay. And so now you can see that it's going to draw from the bottom of the bottle like that. Okay. And once I'm happy with you know the length of my straw, then you can also tape this. So I'm gonna get another little piece of duct tape. Just a tiny piece. Oops. I'm just going to tape it on to the valve. All right, so now if I screw on my bottle, we're at this point in the game, right? And again, at this point, it might be a good idea to test the pump mechanism. So here's how I'm gonna test it. This is the input where the water's gonna come in, and then this is gonna be the output. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I have my cup of water here, and I have another little cup of water here, or sorry, this is an empty cup. I'm gonna do my best to suck out. I'm gonna stick my straw into the cup, and when I draw back on my syringe, let's see if we can get the water to come in. Okay, I got a little bit of water, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to push it, and it should fill up or sorry, it should shoot out the nozzle end. Oh, so yeah, so now I know my plunder works. I can put whatever is left into that cup. So again, to test it out, you could stick your straw in a cup of water. You can draw in the water into our syringe, and then you push down the plunger and it should shoot out the end. So that's a basic water gun, right? Now, if you want to fill up your reservoir, your little tank, um, I think the easiest way is actually just to cut a little, a little hole into the top back of the gun, and then you can just fill up the tank uh, once everything's attached. Uh, I'm going to do that a little bit later on. Uh, let me just make sure I got all the water out before I continue, because I'm going to try to keep this clean. Okay. And I have paper towel right here. I spilled just a little bit. It's going to get a little wet later, but hopefully you guys do this either outside when it's not raining or cold and, or in maybe the bathtub or in the bathroom in the sink. So you could try that out as well. Okay, so I'm going to leave my bottle on for now. All right, and now we have to move on because we tested our mechanism. So now we want to connect our long tube to the nozzle end. So that's going to be this long tube. I think this was about 10 inches, I said. Make a little room, and I'm going to connect it to 
this output end, our nozzle, right? Again, you're just gonna sort of wedge it in best you can. Okay, I managed to wedge it in. And then if you want to secure with a piece of tape, you can. Okay, I'm just gonna take a little piece of tape here. Try to pull it as tight as possible. And there we go, so that's attached. And at this point, we can start a little bit thinking about how we want the design of our uh, squirt gun. So I kind of want the gun, sorry, the nozzle to shoot out this way. So basically the end of, or the nozzle of your gun is gonna be here, right? The nozzle of the water gun. And if I want to make it a little bit more cooler, I can add some straws. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit, I'm going to cut a little bit right there. This is where you can kind of play around with your design. Maybe I'm going to do an alternating design. So you can cut up your straws to kind of cover up the tube Oops, that went underneath there and you can do whichever design you want maybe you want two long pieces of straws to connect so i think i'm going to get to about here you can see my straws are there and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave a long piece on the top like this and this is where the water is going to shoot out. Okay. And I think I ought, maybe that's a little too long. So maybe I'll cut off just a little bit like that. Okay. So I have all these threaded on. And what you can do now is we can tape it into place. So I want this to be taped to the top of my bottle. So let me grab a piece of tape. Oh, I'm all out of duct tape. So I guess I gotta resort to <laughs> the washi tape. That's okay. Again, this is the decoration part. So I'm going to just tape all the way around the bottle. I'm gonna do that maybe twice let me get it nice and secure okay and then I kind of want to do the same thing for my syringe here I want to make sure it's secured to the bottle so maybe I'll add some more tape around here Oops, and I can see already that my nozzle is a little bit crooked. So let me see if I can adjust that. Maybe I can move it like there. There we go. Let me go ahead and rotate with a little bit more at a time. I'm going to use what little <laughs> duct tape I have left just to secure the ends down a bit. And again, this is a prototype, so it might not look very good the first time I make it, but if I try, keep working on it, I can keep making improvements to the design. And the last thing I need to make is actually, let's see, we got to create a handle. So, I mean, it's one thing to hold the gun, the water pistol down here, but maybe you want a little handle, right? 
So I think I handle would be good maybe right about here. So I'm just going to use whatever straw leftovers I have. I'm going to cut this up a little bit. Oops. Let's drop that. I have a fan on, so they're flying everywhere. And then I think I'm going to also cut up the rest of the, the bendy straw that I had. Maybe I'll put it like this. And I think I also have one little piece here. Maybe I'll alternate it like this so I won't use this bit. So that's kind of the basic handle design I'm looking at. And I'll use a piece of washi tape to connect them. I'm just going to tape across like this and then wrap around to the other side. Maybe you want to use something else other than straws to make your handle. You can use popsicle sticks, um, you know, pop, whatever you find at home, right? You can try to figure out how to make your handle. And I'm just going to do my best to attach it right there. So I'm going to come, I'm going to do two long, a couple strips of the washi tape. And I'm just going to kind of thread it through over the syringe and I want it to connect on either side like that. So I kind of just came on over the top of the syringe and again if you come up with a better way to design your handle feel free to use your design instead. I'm just going to kind of do that and oh yeah it kind of works. It's a little small but that's okay. You could secure it with, could secure it with a little bit more. I'm gonna think I'm gonna do one more. Yeah. There we go. And then maybe I'll do one more wrap around the center. Them. So that's my, that's uh, the basic water gun. Uh, again, it, to fill up your bottle, you would need to cut a little hole. So I'm just going to use my scissors to kind of pinch, to cut a little bit, a little hole like that. So there's a little hole right here. I can fill up my bottle. Let me make my hole a little bit bigger. <laughs> Try not to cut my tape. And then I can fill up my bottle like that. And let me go ahead. I have a tub. So I'm going to try squirting my water gun into the tub. <laughs> Let's see if you guys can see. So again, here's, uh, I have my reservoir tank. It's going to, when I pull back on the plunger, the water enters the syringe. So I have a little water in my syringe now. And when I squirt out, might need a little bit more than that. Oh, there we go. It's and basically the faster you push down on the plunger, the faster the water's gonna come out. <laughs> All right, I don't want to make too much of a mess because I'm not outside and I'm not near a sink. So I'm just going to put that back. And here is my DIY <laughs> super soaker. And I still have my other design here. I kind of made them a little bit similar, but I can totally see you putting the the reservoir tank facing the other way that I could see it fit there, right? <laughs> so you can kind of work with that and you can even reuse the, the syringe and the one-way valves if you wanted to use a full-size water bottle maybe to have a bigger water tank. 
So there's a lot of different things you can do with this design and I'd be interested to see what you guys came up with. So, uh, and <laughs> before I end the session, just again, I want to reiterate a couple of our upcoming programs. Um, today you might have been at our story time with Miss Ginger. Uh, next week it's actually going to be in person at 11 so it's no longer on Instagram it's going to be in person at the library at 11 and then so is my little learn hand story time that's where we learn some ASL signs along with reading some great stories that's also going to be 11 11 o'clock not on Instagram in person so feel free to stop on by tomorrow for that or sorry next week next week not tomorrow so stop by next week for in-person story time both Tuesday and Wednesday at 11. And if you enjoyed this craft today, I'd be very grateful if you would take our survey to let us know how much you enjoyed it or if you have any suggestions for improvements or even some suggestions for future STEM crafts. So feel free to scan this QR code or the link should be in the description box. So thanks again. Oop, let me close that. <laughs> Thanks again for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed making your DIY Super Soaker, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.